The calendar now says 2007, and that means it's time to open Big 12 play. Coming up on Inside Cowboy Basketball, we take a look at the first conference game and a look back at the final non-conference game of the season. Plus, sophomore guard Byron Eaton tells us why he's a role model to the folks back in his old neighborhood. All my friends at home, every time I go home, they always say, you're doing it for us, you know what I'm saying, for the people that couldn't do it. And finally, we preview a pair of Big 12 road games, including a trip to the Fog. All that and much more coming up right now as we go inside Cowboy Basketball. Hit it, hit it. Hit that, Kenny. Hit that, Joe. Hit that, John. We get there. Two national championships, six Final Fours, 17 conference championships. From Iba to Eddie and now Sean. From 1938 to today, it's been home to the rowdiest arena in the country. Join us on Eddie Sutton Court as we go inside Cowboy Basketball with head coach Sean Sutton. It all starts now. Welcome to Inside Cowboy Basketball. I'm Rob Labor. The Cowboys' winning ways continue. They open up Big 12 play with a big win over Baylor right here at home. For more on the victory, let's head to the locker room and post-game reaction. Coach tell us all the time, you know, when we get in the Big 12, you ain't going to have no, no blowout games like we had last, last game out. And, uh, I mean, you know, last year we let some games slip away, you know, but this year we're going to try to... Instead of letting them get slipped, we're going to try to get the wins this year. You know, uh, we already had one hard game that we lost this year, and um, that's behind us, and now we're going to try to get all the wins we can get. For more on the game with the Bears, let's join Tom Dorado and head coach Sean Sutton. Guys? Well, thanks very much, Rob. What a way to open up the Big 12 conference season. Good win over a good team. It was, and uh, yeah, I think Baylor's really improved. When you've got uh, the type of guards they have and the way they can shoot the basketball, uh, they're a very dangerous team. And, I thought it was critical that we get off to a, a great start in conference, uh, winning our first game. If you're going to have a chance to compete for the league championship, you've got to win your home games. And I thought the first half was the best defense we played all year long for 20 minutes, held them to 24 points. Second half, I, I didn't think we were as aggressive. I had a hard time containing the basketball, but you got to give them credit. They made some good shots. But our overall defense on Bruce and Jarrells to hold those two guys the three of 17 shooting the basketball ultimately, I think, led to, to us being able to win the game. Several storylines, obviously Mario Bogan, his usual self, 26 points, 13 boards, despite having foul problems in the second half especially. And then Terrell Harris coming back, didn't know how he was going to play, but he got off to a good start. That helped. It did. And, you know, Mario was really had a big time performance, 26 points, 13 rebounds, but very proud of Terrell and the effort that he gave us. Uh, off the bench. I uh, had 13 points. I was concerned that he might be uh, a little timid and a little tentative uh, wearing that mask for the first time, but he hit a couple shots early. I thought helped his confidence. He relaxed. He settled into the game uh, and really, really played well for us. You know, he mentioned uh, in the post game that it really didn't bother him at all, and I think you had that inkling on uh, Bexig on Friday when he put it on the first time, went through some uh, skeleton drills and really showed that there was no ill effects one way or the other. Yeah, and I don't think it'll be a problem for him. I, I thought maybe the first couple of days wearing it, it might take some time to get used to. And I was happy he was able to practice a little bit on Friday. He got a chance to shoot with it uh, today on the, on the game, I mean, uh, yesterday uh, before uh, our shoot around in our sky report on game day. Uh, but really played well at both ends of the court. And then Kenny Cooper, mm -hmm. uh, what, a, what a great effort on the, on the board. Ten offensive boards. Eleven rebounds for the game, ten at the offensive. Uh, it was really a monster on the glass. Went up, uh, demanded the basketball, uh, finished with eight points, eleven rebounds, but ten offensive, and really uh, continues to get better. This is the way you thought he should play all the time, and he's really coming on and looking more comfortable every day. Yes, and I really thought him and Terrell would make a lot of progress from year one to year two, and Terrell probably played a little bit better early, but now Kenny has really caught up in the last five or six games. Byron's starting to play better, so our three sophomores are really making good progress. Uh, and have been very productive in the last five or six games. Quickly, you met with Adarius Bowman this afternoon. What did you guys discuss, and where are we going from there? Well, you know, I had a chance to visit with him. First of all, let me say, uh, what a great young man. Uh, really sharp, really articulate, uh, very polite. Got a lot of passion for the game of basketball. Uh, we're going to visit a little bit more 
uh, but we'll make a decision here in the next day or so, and it may work out where he can join our team, and if he does, that'll be a good addition, Tom. Sean, congratulations, 15-1, 1-0 in Big 12 Conference play, and we appreciate your time. Okay, Tom, thanks. Rob, that's all we've got from here. We'll send it back to you. Thanks, guys. Coming up after the break, we take a look back at the final non-conference game of the season. That's up next when Inside Cowboy Basketball continues. Inside Cowboy Basketball is brought to you in part by Arby's, your central Oklahoma Honda 5 dealers, Oklahoma Farm Bureau, O'Reilly Auto Parts, your Oklahoma 4 dealers, Conoco and Phillips 66, and your Oklahoma Chevy dealers. You're watching Inside Cowboy Basketball with head coach Sean Sutton. The Cowboys closed out the non-conference portion of their schedule with a record-setting win over Southwestern Oklahoma State on Tuesday night. For more on the victory, let's head to the locker room. Not just from the beginning this year, I think from the beginning of last year, all the adversity we came through, it made us stronger mentally, you know, and everybody took upon themselves to go out and individually get better. And when you take upon that, get individually better, it helps the whole as a whole. And I don't think it's nothing we can't overcome. We've got a little bit tougher than what we were uh, at the beginning of the season of last year. And uh, in practice, you know, these guys are on the floor the whole time. We have, we have nobody to sub right now. So, they, so they've gotten a little tougher. They're a little more uh, uh, physically and mentally a lot tougher than they were a year ago. For more on the game with the Bulldogs, let's join Tom Dorado and head coach Sean Sutton. Guys? Well, thanks, Rob. Indeed, it was a record-setting night earlier this week when the Cowboys closed out the non-conference portion of the schedule and over and above the, the 129 points, the fact that we put 14 wins on the board that night and also did not take a step backwards was important to you guys. Very important that we close out the non-conference portion of our schedule uh, on a high note and I thought if there was a time where our guys could be distracted or maybe not as focused as we would have liked, it would have been that game uh, coming off uh, a very good outing against Texas San Antonio uh, with Terrell Harris's injury with Baylor and the Big 12 started on Saturday. Uh, there was a little bit of concern that our guys might have a little bit of a letdown, uh, but they played very well at the offensive end. Uh, 129 points, uh, two great individual performances out of Mario Bogan uh, and James on Curry. He scored 67 points between them. And then we had other guys step up, Byron with 15, Marcus Dove with 13. Uh, David Mons gets 18 points in 16 minutes, so uh, a very good overall offensive outing. You know, you mentioned Marcus Dub, and we, we talked about this on the radio show, the fact that uh, Marcus certainly gives you the lockdown guy you want, but because of the short bench, the thin depth, he's going to have to produce in other areas as scoring and rebounding. One of the things we talked about is that he's such a great defender. And I, you know, I got the confidence in him that he can guard any player uh, that we play against. Uh, when he's playing 28, 30 minutes a game, uh, in the situation that we're in right now, we need him to do other things to impact the game. Uh, rebound the basketball, uh, score consistently. Not that he has to score a lot, but six, seven, eight points a night, uh, going to get seven or eight rebounds. In the last three games, he's been able to do that. And I think that's a, uh, been a big lift to our team. You were kind of between a rock and a hard place in that game as a staff. Obviously, not enough players. Terrell Harris was not on the floor for that game. You have a situation where you can't put other guys in to keep the score down, which most coaches would do. Plus, a lot of guys had to play a lot of minutes. You know, ideally, you, you put your starters in about 20 minutes that game, but with only seven players available to play, uh, we really didn't have much of a choice. And guys played longer than we would have liked, and certainly you never want to run up the score on anybody. But... Uh, and you think about the great combinations that we've had at Oklahoma State, dual 20-point scoring threats. Uh, you think about Rainey Rutherford and Bryant Reeves. Uh, you think about John Lucas and Tony Allen. And then you think about John Lucas and Joey Graham in 2005. But James Hahn and, and Mario are right there with those guys in terms of being able to score the basketball. Both those guys are uh, really special at the offensive end. 14-1, non-conference. What's your uh, non-conference report card, so to speak? I think it's good. You know, somebody would have said before the season, uh, especially with uh, everything that's happened up to this point, that you'd be 14-1. and one. I think you'd be hard-pressed to, to turn that down. And uh, obviously, we've had some big wins over Syracuse and Pittsburgh, uh, have gotten consistently uh, better uh, over the month of December, uh, made a lot of improvement in a lot of areas, and 
Uh, now we go into the next step of the season, the Big 12 play on Saturday. We mentioned Randy Rutherford. He'll be part of our Ask Coach segment. That's coming up next. But first, a little trivia. Which Cowboy holds the record for the highest field goal percentage in a season? Is it A, Keontae Roberts, B, Royce Jeffries, or C, Thomas Jordan? The answer a little later as Inside Cowboy Basketball continues in a moment. You're watching Inside Cowboy Basketball with head coach Sean Sutton. Guy T cross screen down screen. T, T. Okay. Go, here, go get him. Go get him. So, what do you want to do? He's going to down screen for you. Sprint over there and get him. Hold up. Don't do that. What are you doing? I'm going to shoot it. Yeah. Same way, go again, same way. Get your questions ready. It's time to ask Coach. Steve in Ponca City leads us to Randy Rutherford, but he was with Terrell out for a few days. How could you even scrimmage in practice? Well, we only had nine guys yesterday, and, and Randy had to practice, and, and uh, he's been able to do that. Uh, the last couple of years from time to time when we need him and still a, a very good player uh, in excellent shape. Uh, there's been other staffs through the years that have incorporated four players that were on the staff and we're in a situation right now uh, with Terrell being out. We needed a 10th player and Randy stepped in uh, this week and has done a really good job. I, I think our guys see uh, just what a great player he was. Larry in Tulsa wants to know what's your take on the Big 12 this season? I think from top to bottom, I'm not sure uh, this is not the best it's ever been in the 11 years of the Big 12 existence. And I think the teams at the bottom that have been in there in the past are, are a lot better. And I think uh, you're going to see some very competitive games. Uh, we've got two teams at the top, I think, in Kansas and Texas A&M. They were both uh, legitimate Final Four teams. Uh, you think about Texas. They're going to continue to get better and better over the course of the season. A lot of great youthful talent. And then the other programs in this league have really taken a, a step up and uh, uh, should be a great league race. Uh, Kansas, certainly the favorite, with probably Texas A&M right behind them. We appreciate all your questions every week, and you can send them to Sean, Ask Coach, Fox23.com. And as we say every week, hopefully we'll get to yours next time around. Very difficult week on the road for the Cowboys and Big 12 play. We'll get to that and even more. But, Rob, for now, it's all yours. Thanks, guys. Coming up after the break, sophomore guard Byron Eton tells us why he loves hearing from his family. That's next when Inside Cowboy Basketball rolls on. Hey, guys, how you doing? This is Desmond Mason, and you're watching Inside Cowboys Basketball. Now to that trivia question. Which Cowboy holds the record for the highest field goal percentage in a season? If you guessed Keontae Roberts, you're right. Robert shot almost 63% from the floor in 1997. In his second season, guard Byron Eton is becoming more familiar with his role as one of the Cowboys' floor generals. His agility and ability to pass and score make him very difficult to stop. Byron is a big fan of his hometown Dallas Mavericks and the answer. Byron tells us more as we go in the paint with the native of Big D. What's your favorite food? Homemade oh, chicken. Now, that yeah, what it used to be. Now it's probably a chicken salad. What uh, pro athlete do you look up to? They have to be out of Adam Iverson and um, Steve Nash. If you could have dinner with one person, who would it be? I think it would be Adam Iverson. What's your favorite day off activity? Watching movies. To, uh, go home. I'm a, I'm, I'm a movie guy. I watch a ton of movies. I, got, um, I think I got the most movies on the team. Uh, that's all I do is just sit home and watch movies. If they were to make a movie about your life, who would play you? Denzel Washington would be the main one because um, he's a great actor. He can do any type of scene and make it, and make it tre tremendously good. What's your favorite sport other than basketball? Football. Um, um, I was actually recruited high in football than I was in basketball. What's your favorite thing to do before a game to get you pumped up? Call and talk, just be able to hear my uh, mom's voice. 
and my baby sister voice. And uh, now, if I can just, just, just hear my son cry anything, just to be able to hear his voice, that's, they're going to get my gym and go and get ready to go out there and take whoever we got to play down. What's your favorite thing about playing here at Oklahoma State? Game days. There's um, how the fans be there to support uh, the Cowboys. What's your proudest moment? Just being able to graduate college, uh, high school and make it to college. Um, there's not many people where I'm from that did that accomplish that. I mean, a few graduated, but not all. What is your most embarrassing moment? It was like when I was a little younger. Um, we were playing on a, we were playing football, and, and the, the field was wasn't marked as good as it should have been. And I was running, um, and I stopped on like the, the five yard line. I think it was a touchdown. Threw the ball there. I thought I scored. And the other team came back and picked it up and ran it back for a touchdown. Then the next time I got it, I ran it all the way to the trees <laughs> to the referee without the whistle. After the break, we preview a pair of conference road trips. That's next when Inside Cowboy Basketball rolls on with head coach Sean Sutton. This is Joey Grimm, and you're watching Inside Cowboy Basketball with Sean Sutton. Inside Cowboy Basketball is brought to you in part by Arby's, your central Oklahoma Honda 5 dealers, Oklahoma Farm Bureau, O'Reilly Auto Parts, your Oklahoma 4 dealers, Conoco and Phillips 66, and your Oklahoma Chevy dealers. The Cowboys will find themselves on the road next week with a pair of conference games, one in Lawrence and one in Lincoln. Let's rejoin Tom Dorado and head coach Sean Sutton as they look ahead to the Jayhawks and Huskers. Guys? Well, thanks again. We mentioned last week, Sean, the Cowboys have to play three of the first five games in conference on the road, and two of them are coming up this week at Kansas, at Nebraska. Tough week for our team. Uh, when you talk about the toughest places to play in college basketball, Allen Fieldhouse certainly one of the three most difficult places. Uh, it's been a place that we haven't had much success. We haven't won there uh, since we've been at Oklahoma State. Uh, had a lot of great games there through the years, but have never been able to, to figure out a way to, to win one at the, at the end. Uh, should be a, a great matchup, national television, uh, and two of the, the best programs in the Big 12 year in and year out. So it'll be a great atmosphere. I uh, think our guys are uh, excited and looking forward to the challenge uh, of experience Allen Fieldhouse and competing against a great basketball team. Now Nebraska again coming up on the heels of that trip to Lawrence and obviously you're very close to the new coach in Lincoln. Doc Sadler, you know, has been a longtime friend, a uh, former student manager for my dad at Arkansas and really babysat me a lot when I was growing up. So uh, we've known each other for a long time. Uh, did a great job at UTEP and has certainly done a great job with Nebraska in his first year. Uh, they're one of the most improved teams in the Big 12. Uh, they, they play very hard. Uh, they're very aggressive at the defensive end. Uh, offensively, uh, they do a good job in their motion offense. So uh, two big tests this week. Uh, first two true road games for our team. So hopefully we're going to be ready to play. And a sidebar to that Kansas game, at halftime they're going to honor your dad. I know he's looking forward to that. Uh, out of all the programs in this league and really throughout college basketball, Kansas is probably the program that he has the most respect for. Really, when he came out of high school in Buckland, it came down between Kansas and Oklahoma State and probably would have went to Kansas had Dr. Allen uh, promised him he would be there for his whole career, but he was going to retire after his first two years in college, so made the decision to come to Oklahoma State to play for Mr. Iva. But I know he's looking forward to to being back up in Allen Fieldhouse. I think he's happy he's not having to coach because he never had great success there, but uh, uh, he's excited about seeing Bill and, and being there uh, for the celebration. Sean, everybody's excited about Big 12 Conference play. Best of luck. Thanks, Tom. That's all we have from here, Rob. Send it back to you. Thanks, guys. That's all the time we have for this week. Be sure to join us next time as we continue to follow the Cowboys through Big 12 play and hopefully toward a conference title. For Tom Dorado, head coach Sean Sutton, and the entire OSU coaching staff, I'm Rob Labor, and we'll see you next time.